Johnny's offering one of his sunny smiles to Edward. He's rather surprised because Edward doesn't seem to know what sunny smiles are. Surely everyone knows about sunny smiles. I'm collecting for the National Children's Home, Johnny tells him. What's the National Children's Home? asks Edward. Oh dear, obviously Edward needs a bit of help, Johnny explains. The pictures in the Sunny Smiles booklet are to remind us of all the children looked after by the National Children's Home. Children like Giles and his sister Julia. But not very long ago, Giles and Julia lived in their own home with their mother and father, just like most other boys and girls. It's time for school. Julia and Giles went to the same school. It was a Thursday, and it seemed that morning to be just like any other Thursday. Father went to work as usual. He worked at the photographer's shop in the high street. It was early closing day, and that afternoon, Father took Mother out for a drive. Little did they realize how different this Thursday was going to be from any other. Why don't you say we'd be there? Well, I said we'd be there between one and half past. As they stopped at the traffic lights, Mother noticed something rather strange going on. That's the camera shop where Dad works. Jim, look at those men coming out of the shop. They're getting in the car. It's a robbery. I'll have to follow them. Following us. Put that car, he's right behind us. Let's go, let's go, come on. If we can just keep them in sight. Come on, pull away from it. Jim, mind how you go. Come on, come on, it is coming up on us. Come on, let's go, let's go, come on. Oh, Jim. Come on, Mark. Dad's crashed the car. But thanks to his pluck, the police have caught the robbers. Giles come home from school not knowing anything's wrong. Where's Mummy? Julia? Mrs. Thompson next door invited them in. She was quite sure that their mother would be back very soon. It wasn't like her to be out when the children came home from school. But at that moment, Mrs. Thompson saw the policeman. Something serious must have happened. I say. The policeman explained about the accident. Her mother and father had both been hurt in a car crash and had been taken to hospital. So mummy and daddy wouldn't be coming home. Julia and Giles had no uncles or aunts who could look after them. And Mrs. Thompson had a family of her own to look after. Whatever happens to boys and girls like Giles and Julia, whose parents can't take care of them for a while? Someone told Mrs. Thompson she should get in touch with the National Children's Home. Fortunately, their house in Scarborough had room for Julia and Giles. A very kind lady called a social worker took them there.
Scarborough is one of the many branches of the NCH where children are looked after who are in need of a home. The branch is in the charge of Mr. Graham, and he asks the lady that brought them all about the children. Mother may be in hospital for a long time, he's told. Fortunately, father's not so badly injured. Meanwhile, Mrs. Graham takes Julia and Giles to meet Miss Hazel, who will look after them while they're here. Miss Hazel knows how hard it is for children who've been separated from their parents, so she'll do all she can to help these two settle down and make new friends. Giles meets the boy he'll be sharing a room with. He's called Martin. Miss Hazel then takes Julia upstairs to her room. And here's her roommate. Her name's Susan. Susan asks Julia if she'd like to see the garden. There's a good view of it from here. All these boys and girls have come to live here because for one reason or another, their fathers and mothers are unable to give them a home for the time being. Let's see. That's Keith with a camera. He's always taking pictures. And here's Molly, bouncing along as usual. Down the slide comes little Tommy. He looks happy. And this is Jenny with one of the youngsters. And there are many more, as Julia and Giles soon discover when they all sit down for tea. What a big family. Even so, Julia and Giles are feeling rather sad, away from their parents, their home, and all the things they've grown up with. Next day, Julia and Giles become the centre of interest. Miss Hazel shows everyone the newspaper with their mother's and father's photograph in it and the story of how they chased the robbers. Thanks to them, the police had caught the gang and got back the cameras they'd stolen from Dad's shop. Miss Hazel rings the hospital every day to find out how Giles and Julia's mother and father are getting on. It's not always easy for children to understand why they can't go back and live in their own home. Ah, Julia, Giles, just a minute before you go out. Could I have a word with you, please? Miss Hazel takes Giles and Julia on one side and tells them that their father will be coming out of hospital quite soon, but their mother may be there much longer. Giles is upset. But Martin comes along and asks Miss Hazel if he can show Giles his guinea pig. He tells Giles Miss Hazel would probably let him keep a guinea pig too. Why, there's even an empty hutch to keep it in. Somehow, Miss Hazel finds a few minutes between all her other jobs to join in a game. Until Jenny comes in to tell her that Tommy's in the bath again. Oh dear, not again. He has started early today. Carry on. Tommy has come from a family who had no bath. So he's never before had the chance of sitting in a real bath full of lovely warm water. And for him, it's the best game of all. Hazel hasn't the heart to stop him. That second day passed off quite well after all. And for tea there was a nice surprise, baked beans. Soon, arrangements had been made for Julia and Giles to go to the local school. By now they have plenty of friends to show them the way. This is Julia. Hello, Julia. Nice to meet you. Teacher makes them welcome. Julia's in the same class as her friend Susan. Here we are. This is your desk. This is Julia. And this is Renee, who will look after you. You'll be all right, uh, Renee. All right? That's the book we're doing at school now. 
Do you like that? It's okay. Of course, not all the branches of the National Children's Home are by the sea. Scarborough is one of the lucky ones. So it's possible to play on the beach, just like the summer holidays. Look, everybody, the lifeboat. Sometimes there's the excitement of seeing the lifeboat launched. No one's sure yet whether it's just a practice or whether there really is a ship out there that desperately needs help. It is a call for help after all. There's a sick man on board who has to be taken ashore and rushed into hospital. Martin and Giles hurry back to tell Miss Hazel about the rescue. And Mr. Graham has already heard about it on the news. A few days later, Giles got a guinea pig of his own. But what's going on? That looks exciting. It's Saturday, and a group of children are going camping for the weekend. They're soon on the road, and looking forward to a weekend sleeping in tents and cooking their own meals. Julia and Giles had never done this before. At last they arrive at the farm where they're going to camp. Mr. Allen asks the farmer's wife which field they should set up their tents in. Giles and Martin have already started to explore. The boys come running back to camp to tell Mr. Allen about the train. Oh, that's a local steam railway down there, yeah. Hey, can we go on it this afternoon? Yeah, OK, straight after dinner, we'll see what we fix up for you. Yes, the local railway club have managed to get the old steam engines running again. And as luck will have it, when they get there in the afternoon, the train's just about to leave for a trip up the valley. And the children are invited to go along for the ride. When Giles and his friends get back after their train ride, Mr. Allen sends them off to collect wood for the campfire. Julia and Susan go up to the farm and collect fresh milk and eggs. Giles and Martin are the last ones to return to the camp. It seems that Tommy's missing. Anybody seen Tommy? No. no. Julia? Seen Tommy? No. Oh, but nobody's there. seen him since they left the station. Tommy! 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 
An hour later, Tommy still hasn't been found. Mr. Allen has already told the police. And now he decides to telephone from the farm to Mr. Graham at the branch. What do you think you're doing in there? There we go. You're an adventurous sort of young fella, aren't you? I was scared. Right, let's try and get you a nice hot drink. Would you like that, eh? Come along. One of you was missing. What's been going on? It seems like a little lad, young Tommy here, came down to the station and finding one of the carriage doors open, he climbed in. The other two young fellas came here looking for him. He must have fell asleep, because when he woke up, the carriage door was shut and he couldn't get out. I shouted on shouted and no one heard me. Well, never mind. The main thing is you're safe and well. Now, I suggest we go back to the house tonight so that you can get a good night's rest. It's 11 o'clock next morning when Miss Hazel wakes them up. She's brought them their breakfast in bed. And she has some exciting news for Giles. Your father's downstairs waiting to see you. Mummy got your postcard yesterday. Mum with all the kisses on. Look, Hi. Giles, here's a letter from Mum. It says it should be well enough to come home soon. Isn't it great? I think Miss Hazel's been looking after you very well indeed. Even if you do spend half the night out playing in railway trains. That's almost the end of our story. But a few weeks later, as Miss Hazel helps Giles and Julia to pack their things to go home, Let's remind ourselves of all that Miss Hazel and the National Children's Home have done for them. She took the place of their mother for nearly a year. And the NCH has provided them with a home, food, clothing, care and companions. Just as they have for all the other children at this branch. And in all the 52 branches up and down the country. This time, Mother, looking fit and well, has come with Father to take them home. And now it's time to say goodbye. For Giles and Julia, it's both a happy and a sad day. Not only must they part from their friends, they're also reminded that several of the children in Miss Hazel's family have no home to go back to. Keith takes a few last photographs to remember the day that Julia and Giles went home. Photographs are a nice way of remembering our friends. That's why Sunny Smiles are such a good idea. And why Johnny's giving Sunny Smiles photographs to Edward. Edward will give something in return to help all the children that NCH look after. If you all succeed in collecting even more than you have in the past, perhaps the National Children's Home could help even more children in need. Wouldn't that be marvelous?